it's great to be here. Um, I think when I was asked to give this talk, uh, I was thinking about failure. And why is this certain obsession with failure? Certain fetch about failure. It's something, thinking about failure is the, the path to the kind of success in this place called Silicon Valley. It's a small city in North America, in, North America, in California. And somehow this, the culture of this city becoming this global obsessions for this giant creations of wealth. Uh, and this is, the, this is the, what Silicon Valley looks like in the 70s with all the names. Uh, my background, uh, I'm originally from Taiwan. I studied computer science in the US in the 90s. Uh, dropped out of my PhD program to join the internet revolution in 95. Uh, <clears throat> after that, uh, well, after the first bubble burst, I moved to China. Uh, and really thinking about coming back to this is the, even in the 90s, when we started the internet company, nobody talks about failure. It's about getting to success. It's about getting there. Uh, it's about trying everything you can to be, to solve problems, to be successful. Uh, but somehow in the past 20 years, because of this, all this internet, these things become popular. Fail for all, fail, uh, everybody coming out with the excuse, with breaking things, let's try, let's fail, let's break things, let's do it again. And that created the Silicon Valley today with all the internet company. Then it got us into the trouble. I mean, right now the democracy, the political system around the world is in trouble because of this. Myanmar is, start, is having trouble stopping hate speech spreading around Facebook and well, Trump. That's thanks to Mark. Um, so let's be thinking about what, when we say failure, what is it? Uh, is this regular permissions to do anything for a buck, for money? I mean, Zuckerberg is not doing this to be the betterment of the world. This is all about money. This is all about creating incentive among the world. This is something to think about when we think about pitching failure as a feature. Where it come from? What kind of failure are we really thinking about? And coming back, this is a maker movement context. So I get involved in the maker movement because I started the first maker space in China in 2010 called Xinjiajian. And it's exciting. I mean, join maker movement feel like back in the 90s uh, when the internet got started. Of course, the excitement gets to Obama. Uh, this is White House Maker Fair 2014. But interesting thing happened. When we started to look at this small town called Silicon Valley, for their inspiration for the next generation product, coming out of the maker movement, coming out of the great things, it's going to solve the next generation problem. We got juice wrong. A $450 juice machine squeezing juice out of that package for you. This is a $100 million valuation company. Silicon Valley got so tired of making, so got so terrible of making hardware. This is their excuse for failure. The hardware is hard. Let's not do hardware, let's do something else. So what do we do? Well, let's look at AR, VR. If it doesn't work, let's look at blockchains. Uh, well, now the blockchain is, well, anybody follow Bitcoin? Uh, how much money do you lose in Bitcoin? And then for nothing else, let's have the crazy uncle of Silicon Valley and crazy cousin of Silicon Valley spit at each other about AI. I mean, this is the, this is the kind of things we are getting to in the failure culture of Silicon Valley. And the hardware. This is Cas AR, $100 million evaluated company. Fail without delivering anything. And I don't know how many, how many people read the story of Theranos. $900 million funded, billion dollar startup turned out to be a lie. Well, if it's okay to fail, it's okay to lie. That's, 
that's actually a very interesting trend in Silicon Valley. And of course, this is uh, well, the magic lift. Uh, if you haven't read the review, well, there's no kid here, so the review is, this is a full of shit. <laughs> so this is where we are at this point with the origin of these frail cultures. Is that justified? Is that rethinking about why it is? And here's the reason why they encourage this insane amount of failure. Only 0.05% of the startup entrepreneurship require venture backing. 99.95 of them doesn't need it. But in order to, for that 0.05% to work, they need people to take huge risks. They need people to take this in the huge personal cost of failure. They become a mentor. They become this crazy cultures of coming out next insane, ridiculous ideas with no touch to reality. And it used to work in Silicon Valley, why it is not working anymore. Because for innovation, you used to need three things, the knowledge, the technology, and the productions. In 1970, when you look at the first picture, all these three things concentrate on in this small city called Silicon Valley. I went to the US, I left Taiwan after high school, went to the US for university because I want to study computer science. That's the reason I had to do that is the well, in order to access the knowledge, I need to access to the professor, to the library, to the publication, to the journal. It's not available to me in Taiwan. When I graduated, in order to access the technology, I had to go through the relationship alumni network to get it. And then there's productions. Internet production is easy. We don't live in that world anymore. Today, if you need to acquire knowledge, that's, you can go online. And the third part of this is production. And that's what China and Shenzhen represented in the past 20 years. It's a globalized open production platform. So very quick about Shenzhen, if you don't know it, set up by China in 1987 as the experimental town for capitalism. Uh, this is Shenzhen 1987. This is Shenzhen last year. And that piece of form is Hong Kong. Not much change in Hong Kong since for the past 20 years. Uh, Shenzhen started its life as a huge, massive factory. Uh, but something happened in the late 90s when Shenzhen started to produce its own electronics. Uh, going from DVD to VCD to, well, the prevalence looking of mobile phone. So probably people heard of this expression called the Shenzhen phone, talking about this crazy phone coming out of Shenzhen. But every single one of them has particular use. They solve particular problems. A seven speaker feature phone, something like a boom box for construction workers. This, that idea is worth three, 30 million units a year. Everything bought and well, everybody loves fidget spinner. So fidget spinner at phone. But that's crazy idea, but every single one of this crazy idea, they have customer. They have someone who will benefit from having this product exist. Shenzhen doesn't create products out of the air. Shenzhen, does, Shenzhen only create products for people in need. And when you're starting to do this, it's starting to change in the infrastructure and the entire composition of the uh, industry. And if you think about today is 2018. So just think about someone standing on this stage a decade ago, 2008 and say this, in 2008, I predict Nokia will go out of business in 10 years. Standing here in 2008, they'll be popular. Who, where, where, where did you find these crazy guys? I mean, Nokia, a billion customers served. It's not going anywhere. It's on the trajectory to be the greatest company on earth. Well, four years later, it disappeared. And well, we just celebrated the 10 years of iPhone, and this is what the global mobile phone market looks like. 
Apple, well, trillion dollar company, has uh, 12% of the market share. Where are the rest? Uh, there are companies here people don't even heard of five years ago. Vivo, Oppo, uh, Huawei, yeah, around. Uh, but the interesting part is all of the big one, they combine to be about 50% of the market. Where's the rest? Uh, we'll talk about where is the rest and that's how Shenzhen innovate. And coming back to think about why Shenzhen can innovate fast. How people fail fast in Shenzhen is the, we do this by open, by sharing, by kind of maker spirit in open source hardware, but in the industrial scale, not in this feel good community scale. It's really multi-billion dollar industrial scale. If you want to make a smartwatch in Shenzhen, this is all the component you can acquire off the market. You can just put it together and start shipping. And if one of the pieces doesn't fit your need, you can just customize the piece. Building new things in Shenzhen is cheap. Building new things in Shenzhen is easy. It's finding out what the new things are for that's hard. Coming back, this giant infrastructure of things, helping people to build uh, anything can, they can think of. There's a community aspect to this. And thinking about things coming out of Shenzhen, this is Wiko, the number two mobile phone in France. Uh, this company is only seven years old, overtook Apple last year as number two brand in France. This is Techno, the biggest mobile brand in Africa, shipping about 100 million units a year. And well, this is big, but let's talk small. So this is Robin, um, a good friend. Uh, that's Miko Pan, that's the, uh, the US uh, HDMI stick to, for the back of your TV, or turn your TV into a PC. Five person developing this for six months. Uh, selling this on Amazon, uh, 80,000 unit a year, that's a $10 million business. Uh, even smaller, this is Nerve Mobile, it's a Nigerian mobile company, uh, sell about 20,000 unit a year, it's started by one person, uh, customizing form using Ali, uh, he found over AliExpress. We are at the time in, we are at a new time where we think, when we think about STEM education, training engineer, we forgot how easy it is to acquire an object of technology. And we are having to have that recognition to think about make a movement. And just to illustrate how easy that is, uh, this is a Wall Street Journal article we held, um, making 20 Wall Street Journal form for $70 in two weeks. So, this is rethinking about maker education with the influence of Shenzhen is the, the technology is becoming easy. The technology is becoming accessible. The, te the knowledge, the technology, the production, they are accessible. Who are the people who's best at taking advantage of this? We set up Shenzhen Open Innovation Lab three years ago to find out. Uh, we have the objective of the, being the platform to connect global entrepreneurs to Shenzhen. Uh, we have we have support from the Shenzhen government. Uh, we are looking at this as the, well, we started with the US. The US startup is all about equity. And we moved to Europe. Europe startup is, well, taking forever. Uh, and since last year, we started to find the best entrepreneur who's going to take advantage of maker movement and Shenzhen is from Africa. So this is Tesama. This amount is doing a biodigester, an intelligent biodigester to turn a food and kitchen waste into fuel and into methane gas and the uh, fertilizer. Spent two weeks in Shenzhen taking this idea from prototype all the way to productions. Consulting with the industrial expert, consulting with this, solving the real problem. This is a team of Ethiopian uh, startup using a smartwatch to do uh, pen uh, health monitor and recognitions. Again, they don't train high level AI. They work with the human expert. They use AI to reduce uh, the workload of the human experts. 
they use a smartwatch whereby the bomber to collect data. Uh, this is the other one, this is uh, Ceci in Ghana. Uh, 60, uh, third, one third of the food in the developing country was wasted in storage. So how do you monitor storage? It used to be expensive, it used to be build this gigantic big uh, air condition, humidity control bar. Now you don't. You can take the IoT, stick it into the bag, monitor the, the temperature and moisture, and then you can work, warm the yeah, you can warn the, the farmer about this. Um, and this is the Uber for tractors. Monitor. So coming back to rethinking about where we are today uh, in terms of the innovations. Uh, as we say, the, the knowledge, the productions, the technology. Uh, if we think about knowledge, no longer I have to go to the US to access to internet. Oh, it's not enough I go to US before. If you have to get into this school called Stanford, uh, and then get into the CS program to sit in the class told by Andrew Lane. Today, anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connections, you can jack into the internet connection, take his class for free, learn about the state of the AI. This is how easy it is to access, and it's free. But Here's where interesting and where we are betting a lot on the African entrepreneur. In here, in Shenzhen, I cannot get 20 something young people to sit down and watch this. I try, I try to pay them to do this, they won't do it. And I don't think how many, I, I'm not sure how many 20 something Singaporean young people you can make to watch Andrew Nick's class. I have a group of college kids in Mombasa, in Kenya, self-organized themselves from seven to 10 every night to watch Andrew Nick class together. This is where the knowledge, when it is open, where is the competitive advantage. It's not about fear, it's about access. The second, the technology is open. If you want to learn AI, you want to use TensorFlow, Everybody can download it. It's the same thing as used by the US DOD. So with that and the combination of open production in China, we are running an experiment to rethinking about education, to rethinking about how kids today and what they can do. This is a group of 13 years old in Shanghai, uh, get together thinking about building a robot. So instead of having them coming out with another useless robots to run in around their house, let's do something interesting. So this is Echo Robotics. So it's basically a robot going into the field and taking out the weed. So this company was by uh, EPFL in Dosan, Switzerland. A couple PhD recently raised 9.2 million dollars. Uh, well, traditionally we are going to think about this as a state of the art. Uh, but we are posing the challenge to a group of 13 years old in Shanghai. Can you make one of this? We'll give you we'll give you resource. Can you go and make one of this? Um, and they go around, they look at the robot, they do a drawing. They go on Taobao, they're starting to buy components. They're starting to buy stuff, and they're starting to build it. This is the frame, this is where it is right now. And interesting part is the, when they want to learn about AI, they, can, they, they go on Coursera, they go on, they took us. And here's another interesting part. <coughs> this is the heart of the computer vision they are using. It's a hundred dollars module they pick up on Taobao. And this is by Intel. I mean, this is, this is we, we are living in a time where technology and knowledge is so widespread. The production and cost of things is so cheap. A group of 13 years old can actually copy the things, just got released by a group of PhD in Lausanne, Switzerland. And they might not be the same functionality, but hey, they have better hardware. And they are 13 years old. And the overall cost of building that robot is $1,000. So 
right now we are rethinking about when we think about failure. What do we encourage the kid to fail? It's not just about technology. I mean, they can buy technology. I mean, this group of people are buying technology on Taobao. It's not about STEAM. It's about being able to emphasize with people, be able to recognize there's a need out there. Can they use whatever tool we provide to them to solve that need? It's about solving people's need. It's not about being how cool I am. It's not about being I'm technology. I'm not, it's not about doing technology. Technology are commodity. Technology are open. We need to give the kids the opportunity to try things, to do new things. And the new thing comes from inspirations. The, com the new things comes from the knowledge they have access to. And, but when I, sometimes when I told this to people, they're like, wait, you are teaching kids to copy? Well, that's how we teach kids, right? I mean, we run around with this. I mean, the bag has a plastic version of the wrench. That's what we give to kids. That's toy. That's, that we encourage them to copy the behavior of the dog. But right now we are in an unprecedented time where the knowledge, the open knowledge, the open technology and the open production is allowing kids to get inspired at such a high level. They can actually put on product to compete with a real, on a real market, solving real world problem. So this is where we are in terms of maker education. That's that kid to try to fail, but that us give them a context. Let us stop it. This failure is good in the Silicon Valley style. Let's stop this American, you get a trophy when you show up mentality. Let's bring some tiger mom back to this. Let's bring some Asian education into this. Let's start to demand our kid to do something great, to do something really useful. Let's do what Asian tiger mom would ask. And well, and 13 years old, that barrier can be accepted. But let's not just say barrier is acceptable. Because when I tried that with people educated in Asian, they, when we say barrier is acceptable, they're like, okay, so I don't have to do anything, right? <laughs> that, that, that's how come, that, that's that interpretation I got a lot. So, this is interesting time we are at in terms of maker education, STEAM education, and where we are. And the last part is the interesting part is the when I told people we teach kids to copy with Taobao. Like, eh, this is terrible. You teach kids how to sign that. I said, like, wait, if I don't teach kids use Taobao to build a real thing, I make them use Legos to do the same things as a toy version. I probably get invited to make a fair. <laughs> so this is the this is where we are in a very strange time, and we did a calculation. That piece of Lego cost more than the entire real robots. So thank you. And last slide. Uh, so thinking about failure is fair together, but fair in a community way. So this is a rule of Sanjay by a good friend, Lynn Jeffrey. Let's not design anything from scratch. That's share community, share the experience, share the design. Let's innovate on the things for people needs, or are useful to people, and share as much information as possible. Uh, and then well, when we fail, the failure become a common knowledge to everyone, not just yourself. Uh, with that, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and it's really good to uh,